the rehabilitation science group uh, today we are again with a very important topic that is the cervical pain a differential diagnostic approach is there uh, we, today we are having with us dr sharmila bahadur hussain uh, thank you dr sharmila for coming on to the rehabilitation science group i would like to have your consent we are going uh, live on the youtube Uh, I would like to have your consent, ma'am. Uh, yes. I yes, uh, I'm uh, really honored. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Dr. Sharmila Bahadur Hussain. Uh, she is PhD in physiotherapy from the Savita University, and ma'am has got more than 13 years of the teaching experience. Ma'am has started her career as a tutor, then the lecturer, and presently, ma'am is working as an assistant professor in the same institute that, that that is the mother teresa post graduate and research institute of health sciences pondicherry ma'am has got a lot of uh, publication in her name and ma'am is continuously in the teaching part is there and in upgrading her education she has done latestly she had done her msc in yoga and post graduate diploma in yoga we welcome you dr sharmila on the rehabilitation science group thank you for uh, your concern and your for time now you can start your lecture ma'am thank you thank you sir i would like to have a talk on cervical pain a differential diagnostic approach differential diagnostic approach uh, as we all have uh, seen regarding our um, so many th things are there in case of neck pain the most economic burden being paid on the cervical pain is tremendous we all have a clear cut picture of uh, what is to be done with this neck pain of course uh, there are so many uh, articles are there uh, regarding neck pain and how to treat this neck pain okay good but what is this neck pain what is the differential diagnostic associated with this neck pain neck pain can be always associated with the muscles and tendons and uh, ligaments around the neck it is not so it is a wider uh, aspect we have to think in a wider aspect now so cervical pain an overview about cervical pain is neck pain can be considered in four categories as follows grade 1 no signs of major pathology and little interference with daily activity grade two no signs of major pathology but may impact with the daily activity neck pain grade three will be neck pain with me neurogenic signs of symptoms like uh, radiculopathic sign grade four neuropathic pain with major pathology like a uh, fracture myelopathy neoplasm spinal disorders all those things even infections relating to spine all these things can be regarded as a uh, overview uh, on neck pain neck pain on clinical aspect we can grade on these four categories on a wider aspect when we fall under epidemiological finding tremendously vast among that i had uh, gathered some information regarding the epidemiological uh, view on this neck pain it's a common condition that causes significant disability as we all are evident about it the estimate lifetime prevalence of significant episode of neck pain is 40 to 70 percent and the global point prevalence of neck pain is 4.9 percent this is a recent study about uh, neck pain between 33 percentage and 65 percentage of people recover from an episode of neck pain within one year but glasses are quite common these days uh, it might be due to um, the uh, activity oriented uh, approach are differing among the individuals as so as such we all know and then when it comes to neck pain we are uh, really bothered about not only neck even the shoulder here upon up to 20 percentage of acute neck pain will go on to be, become chronic neck pain as we all know neck pain in 18 to 30 years through to middle age even that is 50 to 55 years in some uh, studies there is a decrease
studies after 50 to 55 years whereas other studies report no change in uh, 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 the variety of neck pain changes there but uh, not the neck pain as a whole all epidemiological studies show women having higher prevalence of neck pain rather than men but when injury is a strong predictor of uh, chronic neck pain this has mainly been described for whiplash injury 20% to 40% of uh, whiplash injury patients will go on to have chronic neck pain high body mass index frequent neck pain extension that is the uh, flexion to extension during the working uh, day high initial pain intensity and high psychological job demands are all predictors of chronic pain development in office workers that to a desktop worker and they are the one who are most prone to neck pain cervical radicular pain has an annual incidence of 63 to 107 cases per 1 lakh uh, and incidence peaks in the fourth and fifth decade in all the varieties of neck pain this fourth and fifth decade uh, they back the scenario in recent global burden of this study neck pain ranked fourth highest for the number of years lived with disability so it has become a major component of disability for in the recent scenario and interaction that is uh, on producing an interaction about the differential diagnostic approach regarding neck pain in differential diagnosis of neck pain consideration may have may have to be taken on patient's age manner or that is the onset and duration of pain the severity of the pain and the general condition of the patient but we have to be much more evident that in children acute neck pain is usually due to an infectious process in the nasopharynx the central nervous system or the lymph node in adult neck pain is often due to dental or other oral infection postural and structural changes in the neck muscular uh, areas that is the affections and injuries in the elderly neck pain may be due to cervical arthritis vascular disease and malignant disorder but we have to think about the other factors also like the neck pain of acute inflammation at tonsils pharynx larynx all these things can also manifest as a neck pain itself points to be considered in the history taking into the location of the pain in the neck radiation of the pain manner of onset the recent or remote injury that might affect the neck occupational trauma recent or present infection exposure to contagious disease exposure to inclement weather that is the difference in weather constitutional disease and duration of complaint and whether it is a primary or recurrent disorder that has to be considered in case of considering the history taking procedure important points in the physical examination will include age and sex of the patient temperature pulse rate respiratory rate blood pressure habits that is the social economic status and the habitual considerations of the patient obvious injury or abnormality associated disease and sensory muscular or vascular changes of course you, the, these vascular changes do carry a major component in uh, cervical pain laboratory test when we come under laboratory test that may be uh, Indirect as such, it is very much essential. Include the complete blood or cell count, serum agglutination test, serological test for syphilis or X-ray examination, and spinal puncture also. In due course, we can land up even with spinal puncture if we are not able to go on with the other tests. Also, the presence of any mass or swelling should be noted, which usually. we being physiotherapist uh, really we miss the presence of any mass or swelling we miss it uh, often we miss it and we land up with a, a drastic uh, scenario where the patient is not recoverable at all in that case uh, we have to be more cautious regarding this mass lesion or swelling that is present in the neck it's 
size, shape, consideration, uh, like consistency, tenderness, uh, connection with the other neck structures or with the overlying skin and its mobility during various movements of the neck and on swallowing should be determined along. A granular side uh, can also manifest as a mass lesion as such. Well. Then uh, we talk about uh, the neck pain of acute inflammation. Um, we have to be talk about talking about the tonsils, pharynx, larynx, and uh, usually uh, that of a sore throat. It may be worse on on sw swallowing or uh, talking, and is usually accompanied by fever, malaise, and other symptoms of rare granulocytic angina. But there is usually the history of an acute sore throat. So acute sore throat is one of the commonest uh, associated uh, symptoms which we always miss. A sore throat, uh, we take it as very lightly, but uh, we can't uh, miss it always. The uncommon uh, uh, retropharyngeal abscess, oh God. This retropharyngeal abscess, one of the uh, commonest factor uh, which may occur in association with an acute information, infection of the throat or ploy, uh, following an injury at the throat or uh, uh, trauma due to a fish bone, all these things can. Symptoms are somewhat uh, similar to those of a peritonsillar abscess, but on examination, the swelling of the posterior wall of the pharynx will be seen and can be palpated even. There should be no palpation as a, in a, an aneurysm. The swelling not to be firm and hard as in malformation of the vertebra. But usually the a lateral rhoangiogram of the, the neck usually shows the posterior wall of the pharynx displaced forward. When coming to acute cervical adenitis, this is one uh, also uh, considered as one of the factors which can lead to uh, auricular and cervical lymph nodes are usually enlarged and painful in case of uh, this uh, adenitis. And moreover, in case of German measles also, this is, uh, is it associated with this uh, form of cervical adenitis. And when we talk about uh, the differential diagnostic pattern regarding cervical spondylosis, spinal stenosis, and disc herniation. When it comes to cervical spondylosis, um, we all know cervical spondylosis being very commonest uh, factor of uh, our clinical, in our clinical set, setup, we come across this cervical, neck pain means we come across this cervical spondylosis very often. Uh, like uh, we are uh, we, to a state where we are mastered in it. These days we are mastered in it. We think that we are mastered in it. But uh, sorry to say this, we are not that much evidence regarding the differential diagnostic pattern of cervical spondylosis with that of spinal stenosis and discrimination. When it comes to the cervical symptoms regarding the pain nature, distribution, extension, pain or movement, all these things will differ in these three cases even. In cervical spondylosis, the pain will be unilateral. But in cervical spine stenosis, the pain may be unilateral or bilateral. Uh, and on this uh, cervical disc herniation may be unilateral or bilateral. And usually more common, it is unilateral. Distribution of pain, when coming to distribution of pain, into affected dermatomes only in case of cervical spondylosis, but in the case of cervical spine stenosis, it usually uh, lands up with several dermatomes affected into affected dermatomes only in case of herniated. Um, but uh, pain on movements, when coming to pain on movement, uh, in cervical spondylosis, it increases, while in cervical stenosis, that is spine stenosis, it increases also, but in case of disc herniation, may increase. But um, most commonly, uh, instead of uh, pain at the localized area, that is at the spot, uh, this herniated cases, it uh, lands up with radiating pain also when in case of extension. Pain on flexion 
it decreases on cerv in cervical spondylosis it decreases in cervical spine stenosis uh, but but in case of cervical disc herniation it increases um coming to pain relieved by rest there will be no uh, difference in pain that is no pain relief will be there at rest in case of cervical spondylosis but there will be pain uh, decrease in pain in case that is relieved uh, at rest in case of cervical spinal stenosis and in case of disc herniation no change in pain will be there but when uh, when coming to the next uh, that is uh, age group when coming to age group affected cervical spondylosis 60% of those greater than 45 years will be affected 85% of those greater than 60 years will be affected in cervical spine stenosis Uh, usually it is uh, it uh, doesn't have a particular age group it is 11 to 70 years uh, as such but uh, commonly it is 30 to 60 years and again in this herniation 17 to 60 years uh, uh, a wide range of 30 to 60 years is seen, seen even in cervical disc herniation coming to the uh, symptom of instability in cervical spondylosis possible uh, instability is possible but in cervical spine stenosis no uh, possibility of instability is there C cervical disc herniation also no instability is seen levels commonly affected in case of cervical spondylosis the most mobile spine as we all know c5 to c7 that is c5 c6 c6 and c7 but in case of cervical spine stenosis it's again it depends upon the um, uh, that is higher mobility spine uh, that is it uh, starts from c4 onwards but uh, in cervical disc herniation it is quite commonly seen at the c5 c6 region there is a uh, cross sectional study stating that uh, disc herniation most common at uh, c5 c6 level because of the format of uh, the habitual format of the individual being uh, at the protruded neck that is what is the uh, cross sectional study report is saying cervical symptoms uh, regarding the onset of symptoms uh, cervical spondylosis slow onset of symptoms will be there cervical uh, spinal stenosis again slow may be combined with spondylosis or the disinflammation but uh, in herniated disc there will be a sudden uh, symptom onset of symptoms will be uh, more evident uh, we will come to diagnostic imaging diagnosis diagnose uh, that is uh, in case of cervical uh, spondylosis quite diagnostic in case of uh, root lesion or uh, that is uh, stenosis also it is diagnostic but uh, herniation also it is diagnostic but but be sure that the clinical signs should Supported. And coming to uh, this is what is the major uh, area of study which we have to move. And coming to differential diagnosis of cervical nerve root and brachial plexus lesion. This is quite interesting. Of course, uh, um, I had uh, come across some studies which state that this nerve root lesion and brachial plexus lesion are uh, quite synonymous with each other most often it is uh, misinterpreted but but we have some of the factors which contribute to this uh, diagnostic factor one is cause cervical nerve root lesion we all know that it is the herniation stenosis or osteophyte formation linked with uh, trauma spondylosis brachial plexus lesion usually due to stretching of cervical spine compression of cervical spine or depression of shoulder region contributing factors uh, for cervical nerve root lesion it is congenital defect which contributes while for uh, brachial plexus lesion it is thoracic outlet syndrome which contributes for pain nature of pain in cervical nerve root lesion it is a sharp burning uh, pain which is uh, in the dermatomal level affected dermatomal level there will be sharp burning pain 
but uh, in brachial plexus uh, lesion sharp burning in all or most of the dermatome pain is uh, pain is but pain in trapezius is more oftenly uh, in a very um, there is a study stating that the trapezius being the forerunner for pain in case of brachial plexus lesion there is a paresthesia the nature of uh, the symptoms that is the paresthesia is found the uh, numbness pain pins and needles in affected uh, dermatome will be seen in cervical nerve root lesion in brachial plexus lesion numbness pins and needles in all or most of the arm um, dermatomes will be seen but a more Uh, ambiguous distribution will be there in case of brachial plexus lesion than the cervical nerve root lesion. Coming to tenderness, nature of tenderness hmm. over affected area of posterior cervical spine, it will be uh, seen cervical uh, nerve root lesion over affected area of posterior cervical spine. Brachial plexus lesion over affected area of brachial plexus or lateral to cervical spine. range of motion decreases as we all know the ventilation that the range of motion but decrease but uh, in case of uh, brachial plexus lesion decrease but usually returns rather quickly than in um, in cervical nerve root lesion coming to weakness weakness uh, it uh, that is there will be a transient paralysis in case of a uh, um, cervical nerve root lesion will have a transient paralysis myopic uh, distribution may be affected um, in case of brachial plexus lesion transient muscle weakness will be there myotomes will be affected it is uh, of course myotomes will be affected in both but in transient uh, muscle weakness and paralysis differs in uh, cervical nerve root lesion and uh, brachial plexus lesion coming to deep tendon reflexes affected nerve root uh, may be depressed in case of cervical nerve root lesion but in um, brachial plexus uh, lesion may be depressed it is generalistic uh, may be depressed so this is way we are uh, much more uh, concerned about side flexion rotation and extension with compression increases symptoms in case of cervical nerve root lesion side flexion rotation extension with compression increases symptoms cervical traction decreases symptoms in case of um, cervical nerve root lesion upper limb tension test uh, all the tests will be positive in um, brachial plexus lesion side flexion with compression same side or stretch to the opposite increase the symptoms side flexion with compression to the same side and stretch to the opposite side may increase symptom which um, but under upper uh, limb tension test will be positive in uh, both coming to differential diagnostic uh, status of uh, neurological disorders of spine, cervical spine and upper limb and upper limb when coming to uh, neurological state uh, disorders in the sense cervical radiculopathy cervical myelopathy brachial plexus lesion burners uh, transient uh, brachial plexus lesion peripheral neuropathy upper limb um, peripheral neuropathy so this will contribute to the uh, neurological disorders of uh, cervical spine and uh, upper limb uh, coming to the symptoms related to the symptoms arm pain in dermatomal situation will be seen in cervical radiculopathy in cervical myelopathy hand numbness will be there head pain hoarseness vertigo tinnitus deafness all these things will be there in cervical myelopathy brachial plexus lesion pain more like localized on to the shoulder and to the neck sometimes on to the face also but um, in burners that is uh, transient brachial plexus uh, lesion temporary pain in the dermatome will be there and uh, peripheral neuropathy uh, no pain will be there in the that is comparatively no pain i am not talking about uh, no pain means it is normal no 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 i am not saying so but there will be relatively less pain um, when uh, coming to pain increased by certain movements in that case cervical in cervical radiculopathy pain increased by extension 
rotation and side flexion. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, Dr. Sharla would be back within a minute. Uh, there is a net issue is there. Coming to cervical myelopathy, the, uh, the hand pain, hostless, vertigo, tinnitus, deafness is given. When in uh, brachial plexus lesion, flexopathy, uh, pain more localized to shoulder and neck alone and sometimes to the face. Burner syndrome, that is transient uh, brachial plexus uh, lesion, very pain in the abdominal level, while cervical uh, neuropathy, upper limb pain uh, of upper limb, no pain will be due. Coming to the pain increased during rotation, that is extension, rotation, or side flexion. In case of cervical radiculopathy, in case of cervical myelopathy, extension, rotation, and side flexion may all cause pain. But in case of pain on compression of brachial plexus alone will be there in brachial plexus uh, flexopathy. And in case of transient uh, brachial plexus lesion, pain on compression or stretch of brachial plexus will be there. Peripheral neuropathy, no pain uh, early, but if uh, if at all we are going for a contract, uh, we are landing up with contractures in the leg phase, there can be pain. Uh, coming to the third one, which is pain may be relieved by putting head on the head. Hand on the head, that is, uh, by the preventing the stretching of the nerve, we can relieve pain in case of cervical radiculopathy. Arm cushion has no effect on pain in case of cervical myelopathy. Brachial plexus uh, lesion, the arm cushion has no effect on the pain. Arm cushion has no effect on the pain even in transient brachial plexus lesion. Peripheral neuropathy, again, arm cushion has no effect on the pain. Coming to dermatomal distribution, sensation is affected in case of cervical radiculopathy. Sensation is affected while uh, even abnormal pattern of sensation will be taken up in case of cervical myelopathy. In brachial plexus uh, lesion, in case of uh, plexopathy, sensation is also affected. But, but we have uh, the distribution of, of uh, sensation, that is the dermatomal distribution will be totally uh, uh, a misguiding uh, aspect in case of brachial plexus lesion. Coming to burners, uh, that is transient brachial plexus lesion, sensation is uh, affected, while in peripheral nerve uh, lesion, that is uh, in case of upper limb uh, peripheral nerve uh, lesion, we have a uh, effect, uh, of course, the sensation will be affected, but um, According to the dermatomal level distribution and uh, even according to the neck position, it may differ. Gait uh, in case of uh, cervical radiculopathy is not affected. Wide based gait drops, uh, drop attacks will be there, ataxia will be there. For, um, proprioception will be affected in case of cervical myelopathy. Brachial plexus in case, in uh, coming to brachial plexus lesion or flexopathy, gait is not affected. In transient brachial uh, plexus lesion, you know, gait will not be affected. Even in flexopathy, gait will not be affected. But next one will be all uh, hand function. Coming to hand function, um, there will be um, alter the hand function in case of cervical radiculopathy, there will be altered hand function. In case of uh, cervical myelopathy, loss of hand function will be there. Um, 
in case of uh, brachial plexus lesion loss of arm function uh, one is uh, that is transient brachial plexus lesion loss of uh, function will be temporarily loss uh, that is loss of function will be temporary loss of function of the muscles uh, that is supplied by the nerve particular uh, nerve that is myotomal distribution will be much more evident in case of peripheral nerve bowel and bladder is not affected in case of cervical radiculopathy possible loss of bowel and bladder um, in case of cervical myelopathy possible loss is there Uh, in all other forms, that is, brachial plexus lesion, corneal uh, uh, transient brachial plexus lesion, peripheral uh, lesion, or uh, peripheral nerve lesion, all these things, bowel and bladder is not affected. Except in case of cervical myelopathy, weakness in the myotome, but no spasticity will be seen in case of cervical radiculopathy. No spasticity will be seen, but a weakness of uh, in myotome can be seen. Spastic paresis in case of cervical myelopathy, spastic paresis will be there, especially in lower limb, lower limb, upper limb after uh, that is later. Weakness in myotomal distribution in case of brachial plexus lesion, transient brachial plexus lesion, temporary weakness in myotome, weakness in the um, that is the uh, weakness of muscles supplied by the particular nerve that is. Peripheral in peripheral nerve lesion, weakness of the muscle supplied by that you know, DTR type um, in case uh, coming to DTR uh, this is not reflex pattern hyperactive negative pathological reflex negative superficial reflex will be seen in DTR DTR hyperactive or negative pathological reflex uh, superficial coming to superficial reflex it will be uh, negative of course. In uh, case of uh, cervical myelopathy, lower limb uh, DTR hyperactive, upper limb DTR hyperactive, positive uh, pathological uh, reflexes, decrease superficial reflexes. Coming to DTR hypoactive, uh, it is uh, coming to brachial plexus lesion. DTR hypoactive, negative, that is uh, negative pathological reflexes can be seen. Negative superficial reflexes are seen in case of uh, transient brachial plexus lesion. Coming to peripheral neuropathy, DTR may be decreased. Negative pathological reflexes, negative superficial. On the whole, gait not affected. Atrophy late uh, can be seen on la as later uh, late signs in case of cervical radiculopathy. Mm. But uh, in case of cervical myelopathy, gait is affected. But um, atrophy is also seen. Gait not affected. Atrophy is seen in case of brachial plexus lesion. Gait not affected. Atrophy is possible uh, in case of uh, transient brachial plexus lesion. And while gait not affected, atrophy not usual with neuropathia in case of peripheral nerve lesion. Coming to the next form of uh, differential diagnosis. Uh, concerned with the contractile nervous tissue that is contracted, inert and nervous tissue based on stretch or tension. Coming I mean, uh, regarding it, the pain, how it is experienced in case of contractile tissue, in case of inert tissue, in case of neurogenic tissue. Pain at the uh, contractile tissue is cramping. Dull aching pain, while in case of inert tissue, that is in case of ligament as uh, Sorry again, uh, due to the technical error, uh, there is the interruption in case for the few seconds are there. Dr. Sharmila would be back within the seconds, within the few seconds. She would start up from the differential diagnosis of contactile, inert, 
and nervous tissue based on the stretch or tension tissues are there. So it's a very interesting topic is there. Uh, she would be talking about how to differentiate between the contractile tissue, inner tissue, and the neurogenic tissues are there. Regarding the contraction tree, the skin will be cramping, dull, in case by in case of inner tissue, there will be dull, sharp pain, while in case of neurogenic tissue, burning, dry, lightning type of pain will be seen. Coming to tingling sensation, there will be no tingling sensation in contractile tissue and nerve tissue, but there will be presence of the tingling sensation in neurogenic tissue. Consistency. Okay, intermittently is uh, experienced in case of contractile and inner tissue, but uh, longer symptom duration will be seen in case of uh, neurogenic tissue. Dermatomic pattern will be, uh, there will be no dermatomic pattern in contractile tissue and inner tissue, but there will be, uh, there can be a dermatomic pattern in case of uh, if nerve root pathology is the case. Peripheral nerve root uh, sensory distribution. There will be no uh, peripheral nerve root sensory distribution in case of contractile tissue. Uh, and same uh, happens with nerve tissue also, but there will be peripheral nerve root sensory distribution seen in uh, neurogenic tissue. Coming to the resistance to stress. Uh, contractile tissue, there will be presence of muscle spasm, inner uh, tissue, boggy, heart capsular uh, field can be seen. That is, uh, in case when we go for a stretch, there will be uh, a resistance can be provided due to muscle spasm in case of contractile tissue. In case of boggy, heart capsular uh, thing, in case of inner tissue and uh, soft tissue stretch in case of neurogenic tissue. But then uh, the next one is differential diagnostics of uh, cervical facet syndrome, cervical nerve root lesion, uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. See, these are some of the things which we commonly come across uh, in case of uh, a cervical neuropathy case is coming, we, can, uh, we always confuse with these forms. Depending on the specific symptoms itself, we can differentially diagnose it uh, as in case of pain referral. In facet syndrome, there can be a possibility is there for uh, pain referral, but in cervical nerve root, they, there is uh, often it is seen that uh, a referral in uh, pain referral is seen. But in thoracic outlet syndrome, it is again possibility is there. But on pain on the hyperextension and rotation, the pain in facet syndrome, because it is very much evident uh, in facet syndrome, often in, without a uh, increase with referral of symptoms will be seen. In case of uh, cervical nerve root uh, lesion, Increased symptoms can be seen in case of hyperextension and rotation, increased symptoms. But in case of thoracic outlet syndrome, we can't encounter any increased uh, symptoms in case of uh, hyperextension and rotation. Coming to spine stiffness, of course, uh, facet syndrome, we can see uh, spine stiffness can be seen. But in case of uh, cervical nerve root, possibility. Possibility of uh, cervical nerve root because due to pain, the patient might be uh, showing some uh, restriction of movement, uh, that is, uh, stiffness can be seen. But uh, in thoracic uh, outlet syndrome, also, they, they can show sometimes they show it uh, as a protective uh, guarding mechanism. They will show. I mean, to paresthesia, there will be no paresthesia seen in passive syndrome but there will be paresthesia in 
cervical nerve root and uh, thoracic outlet syndrome possibility is there for this paresthesia reflexes again in reflexes it is not affected in case of facet syndrome it is uh, maybe it is affected in case of cervical nerve root and also in thoracic outlet syndrome it may be affected the next uh, coming to the muscle spasm the next sign uh, which is common to all these three disorders that is uh, dysfunction facet syndrome cervical nerve root thoracic outlet syndrome muscle spasm so all these three can encounter the muscle spasm coming to tension test in case of facet syndrome may or may not be positive but in cervical nerve root positiveness can be seen and in thoracic outlet syndrome may be positive coming to pallor and coolness in facet syndrome no difference that is no pallor or coolness can be seen in the cervical nerve root is lesion you can see in the pallor or coolness can be seen not be seen and in thoracic outlet syndrome it is positive muscle weakness there will be no muscle weakness in case of facet syndrome there will be possibility of muscle weakness in cervical nerve root syndrome uh, the nerve root pathology and thoracic outlet syndrome uh, late uh, phases that is after some days there will be small muscle affection that is muscle weakness can be seen in smaller muscles uh, in after some days also or uh, coming to muscle fatigue and cramps there will be no muscle fatigue and cramps encountered in facet syndrome and cervical nerve root pathology but there will be a possibility of thoracic uh, outlet syndrome there will be a possibility of muscle fatigue and cramps so most important and the often forgotten part of this cervical region is double crush syndrome this double crush syndrome it is uh, it is a distinct compression at one or more location along the course of a peripheral nerve that can coexist and synergistically increase symptom intensity this double crush syndrome as per the literature available it is a crushing fruit behind this double crush syndrome is it is uh, often misinterpreted as carpal tunnel syndrome of course carpal tunnel syndrome is a part of double crush syndrome double crush syndrome uh, it not only is uh, very much uh, eventually lead to disruption of axonal transport of along the nerve that increasing the vulnerability of distal axons to compression syndrome some symptomatology can be very much severe in case of this uh, double crush syndrome in addition dissatisfaction of the treatment side may be the result of uh, persistent pathology uh, Uh, that is a uh, pathogenic factors on another side along the peripheral nerve can be seen and this double crush syndrome was encountered or first described by upton and mccomas in uh, 1973 and uh, coming to this double crush syndrome why i am talking about this double crush syndrome because cervical nerve root compression and carpal tunnel syndrome that is a nerve being compressed at two different location along its whole course that happens in these two condition that is cervical nerve root compression and carpal tunnel syndrome we always encounter this two different uh, situation uh, at a different uh, in time not often done but uh, we always misinterpret this two syndromes together but um, double crush syndrome is quite uh, a common entity these days this is a list of citations which you can have a look at
and I hope I have uh, given you a message regarding different categories of neck pain appearing in literature based on anatomical location, entryarchy, and duration of symptoms. The multidisciplinary um, or uh, the dimensionality of uh, chronic neck pain accepted under bio psychosocial model implemented increasingly in diagnostic and treatment of patients with neck pain. I hope I have dealt with it in this short period. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Sharmila. Uh, I think it was a wonderful topic that you covered and uh, uh, really gave an insight on the importance of differential diagnosis and especially uh, a problem you have covered is the cervical pain, which is so common in general population. And most of the therapists often encounter patients with cervical pain. Although uh, your presentation did cover most of the thing, uh, but there were a few questions like, what are the major reasons of cervical myelopathy? The reasons for cervical myelopathy is not only the mostly traumatic issues we all know, but apart from that, a malignant disorder is one of the commonest uh, reasons for cervical myelopathy. These days, it is being uh, quite hindered, and not even we are not even bothering about uh, the traumatic uh, factor of the trivial injury which we are causing in order to land up with cervical myelopathy. Uh, I think the light into those trivial factors will prove us to be a good uh, treatment protocol to produce a good treatment protocol. Uh, right. And uh, there was a question on uh, what could be the reason that bladder and bowel is affected in cervical myelopathy? Due to see, it is a bladder and bowel in the sense it is an upper more in, in case if it is an uh, lesion at a higher level due to spinal shock. The first uh, predominant factor is due to spinal shock. That might be okay. the reason. Okay. And uh, Dr. Shamila, you mentioned that two, two very important. Uh, causes of neck pain, uh, one was disc herniation, which was uh, repeated very oftenly. And uh, yes, one was facet dysfunction that we saw. And uh, lastly, yes, the thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, okay, so they, they, there were uh, people who wanted to know, are there any tests clinically done uh, to differentiate between these three? Yes, sir. There are uh, clinical tests actually said. Apart from Sperling's test, there uh, there are uh, even uh, stress related uh, that is mu muscle stress tests are there for particular musculatures alone. There are individualistic tests are there. Uh, I'll uh, I, can I post it uh, in your uh, forum if you if you are interested in it. I'll post it in your yes, forum. Yes, yes, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sharmila, uh, for your uh, explanation and all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. It's my honor. Thank you.